Shalom, shalom, karibuni sana, my name is John Mwangi. I would like to invite and welcome you once again to Slice of Dead social media. Follow us in our platforms, that is Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, and Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok at Slice of Today, Instagram, Slice underscore of Today. At the end of this broadcast, there is always an invite from my brother to be added to Slice of Today WhatsApp group. You can download Slice of Today app from Google Play Store. And or subscribe your email to Slice of Today One Press Post. As long as it's today, you shall be getting content. Now, it's always a pleasure and a privilege to bring God's word to you. Before I pray, uh, apologies for our inconsistencies. I think I'll speak... Uh, on behalf of myself and my brother, uh, it's been an interesting year, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, a lot has happened. I've, I was uh, reminded just before I was doing this broadcast of a scripture Paul writes, and after a seven, he has fought beasts in Ephesus. He has fought, he has fought beasts in Ephesus. We have uh, I've been hacked by Facebook account. Our admin has been uh, denied rights for, for YouTube. Uh, I've been, uh, a lot has happened, a lot has happened, but God is still good to us. The gospel must continue being preached. Uh, on Sunday in our Nairobi sanctuary, Nehemiah is submitted and pastor to the Wambua. He was sharing what God's war must continue. The book of Ezra, and the building of God's house ceased until the reign of King. Uh, I think it is. Uh, I can't remember the name. Like he did, our pastor was challenging us. It is interesting to note that God's work can actually stop, but with God on our side, we are a majority, and we can be able to overcome anything. And everything that comes our way. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to hear your word. We receive your word with faith. We receive your word with thanksgiving. We receive your word with joy. Thank you because we shall be found exercising your word every single day. Thank you because this word shall find a place and a room in our hearts. It shall transform us for the better. And we support faith and made in your space, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And amen. Uh, EMI, this is our year 2022 of conceptions, intimacy conceptions and spiritual bathings. If you cannot, I'm speaking, with, I'm breathing with my, not my nostrils. So, uh, Intimacy conceptions and supernatural bathing. So this is a teaching that I've done in Nairobi Sanctuary and I wanted to share it here and there is a reason as to why I want to share it here. Uh, conceptions, uh, intimacy rather, happens in secret. Uh, Apostle Oropo Michael started a church this year. He opened a, a church this year. He has been doing ministry for long but he opened a church this year and the the mantra of his church, of the church that he's pastoring, he's shepherding, is regarding intimacy. And so it, it's called Encounting Jesus Ministries. Thank you, Jesus. It's called Encounting and Encountering Jesus Ministries. So he did an extensive teaching on intimacy. So among the very many things that we can all agree, Yakoba, for instance, when our wife and her husband are having intercourse, it's not in public, but it is in secret. So something interesting about conceptions is that conceptions happen in broad daylight, but they are hidden. So when a woman conceives, when she has a baby in her womb, it can't be seen on her forehead. So what the process, the process that is actually happening, it is in secret. She can be walking around, what you do not know is that maybe she even has triplets. She can be doing something and what you don't know is that she is having, maybe uh, she, she is incubating a kid in her. So intimacy happens in secret, but conceptions happen in broad daylight, but it is hidden from the near sight of men. So I would like to liken in conceptions, I would like to liken conceptions. In the book of John, 
I think it is John where the Bible that reads the parable of the lost coin, the parable of the lost sheep, and it concludes with the parable of the prodigal son. So these are three things that Jesus wanted to illuminate, to illustrate what happens over actually the general topic can be actually somebody who is uh, worn into the kingdom and somebody who is in the kingdom and they get to get lost when they are going to be pursued to be brought back to the fold so many times in scripture uh, jesus ministering he tries to bring a picture of what the kingdom of heaven is like so I have never done this teaching before. Ni kama likuwa naangalia na sema, eh, ni ketenda kuwambia kuhusu mahali ya bako ni metoka. Sijui daeza waeleza la ni... And then he picks something which is in the environment that they can relate with and he can give an example of. So it's like when you're going to a certain uh, uh, tech industry and you'd like to liken the kingdom of God. So you'd like to use something that they can easily relate with. That is why he never used one illustration to minister to everyone, but he gave various illustrations. Because not everyone can relate, for instance, to farming, to fishing, etc. etc. So I would like to liken conception to three things. I would like to liken conception to three things. Things. The first one, the book of Ecclesiastes 10, 10, the Bible says, If the iron is blunt, the one and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength, but wisdom helps one to succeed. If the iron is blunt, the one and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength, but the wisdom helps, but wisdom helps one to succeed. So number one is the sharpening of an axe. You can, for instance, be given two hours to chop down a tree. You can spend one hour in sharpening it, and you will use five minutes in filling it down. I would like you to note the timings I've given them intentionally. You cannot spend the same number of minutes or hours to do something with a sharp instrument. So you would sharpen for one hour and spend another hour cutting it down. Whereas somebody with a blunt instrument can use half or two hours to bring it down. No. When you use, for instance, half an hour to sharpen the edge, you can use, for instance, 20 minutes so you'll have saved all time. So conceptions, what it is happen, what is happening actually is that you are receiving sharpening. So you can go to school, you can be you can be in a ministry, uh, uh, school of ministry, you can be in school, you can be in a certain training for two weeks, etc, etc. What is actually happening to your life is that you are receiving sharpening. You are edge so it is something that is happening with time it doesn't come all at once but it happens with time time as time passes as time passes as time passes that is what is actually being done over your life in the book of second Kings 6 1 to 7 second Kings 6 1 to 7 i've ever done this teaching before it was about this grace actually somebody was asking for the teaching I was trying to trace it. I think it is almost two years back. This grace. I would like to uh, whoever you go check it out on YouTube. I don't know whether it can be traced on Facebook easily, but on YouTube you can. The Bible says one time the sons of the prophet came to the servant of God, Elisha, and asked him, sir. The place where we stay is too small for us. I would like to ask for permission. We go to the forest, chop down trees, and come and enlarge, expand, and increase our tents, our borders. But you can tell us that you are going to be a part of the world. If it pleases you, please accompany us. The Bible continues to narrate that while they were doing the noble task, the king's business, somebody's axe head fell. In this teaching, I was asking, why is it that the axe head fell? Not why is it not the entire thing with the rod? So you can go and check it out. Like the effectiveness of the axe was actually on the iron head. So without it, you are irrelevant. <coughs> so trading happens in regards to your gift. <coughs> Sorry. 
failing habits in regards to your gift. Your gift is the one which received, receives sharpening. If it is not being sharpened, every other thing which is being done in your life is actually irrelevant. For instance, some, some of us like to put a lot of emphasis, energy, and effort on our bodily structure. Like Nikita Bacho will do in the aqua, but even Paul writes and says physical exercise is good and profitable, like it to some extent. And he concludes by saying the aqua, but spiritual exercise has an eternal reward, it has an eternal acknowledgement. Like he will be jogging one hour for two years, seven years. It has physical benefits which we do not dispute. Like it in the long run, it doesn't quite count. But I want to accept the aqua, but when you continue to grow fat, the words about what I get to enjoy what is happening. So I would like to bring to your attention your back. The training that happens to your life should be in regards to your gift talent. If that is not being sharpened, the activities happening around you are actually irrelevant. Allow me to give an example. One time I was reading prayer, God led me to the portion of scripture the Bible says the Papa Joseph while interpreting the dream of Pharaoh he interprets two dreams, particularly for the Aquaba Pharaoh, slept, dreamt the Aquaba, and there were seven uh, cows at the bank of a river grazing, so the grass is green, seven lean, ugly, these are the scriptures the Bible gives, cows comes from the river, eats the fat cows, cows rather, and the Bible concludes the Aquaba. I could not of utofauti about in your decada. They did grow fat. The prayer that God was leading us to pray was this. Why not? When the little cows come, why did they not eat the grass that was making the fat cows fat? Why did they not drink the water that was making the fat cows fat? But it came to eat the cow. So it was an attack on that which was good. So you can find, you can volunteer for many services. You can volunteer to occupy very many positions. Like even the one you're interested in, the one that you're gifted in, is the one the devil is actually attacking. So an akuja, the, an attacker ku, kupiga, for instance, your music. So you can fight. You are of very good health. Akuna kitu kide kide ubekosa la kiri, that particular body in your throat gets a complication. I remember, I think it is John... Rod, Rod Parsley, if I'm not very mistaken, he gives a testimony that one time he was informed by his doctor, Yakoba, he has throat cancer. So when he was praying, he had quiet of God, Akabuliza, hey, move. Of all the cancers I can get, why my throat? And it is the only vessel, instrument that I'm using to bring glory to you because he's a preacher of the one. I don't know whether he was a musician or a preacher, like, can you get the sense? So you can. For instance, I can remember there's a particular year, uh, one of my friends was wedding, and that week I got a wound at the sole of my foot. At the sole of my foot. And so those who, who, who know me, you know I serve under the capacity of an usher. So if I get a wound at the sole of my feet, I remember that wedding I ushered in sandals. Slippers, actually a bit like slippers. My brother came and asked, "Hey, see the kusa idea when we to dia we are picking about to meet a friend because I know that you are behind your back on So that was a literal attack, a direct attack, attack on my ministry. So this axe head that fell in the river it was a communication that what was happening was of God and it was what was being challenged in the book of Luke." The Bible says, Luke 14, 28. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and it is not, not able to finish all those, all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able to with ten thousand to meet him? Who? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it began to mock him, saying, "This man began to meet with me and was not able to finish." Or what king going out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with ten thousand? 
to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. And if not, when the other is yet a, a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. So, number one, I've told you, we are looking at the sharpening of an axe. I can liken conception to the sharpening of an axe. So it's first sitting down and deliberating on whether the project that you're about to begin, you are able to complete it. Number two, it is like sitting down to strategize for war. Number one, building. Number two, war. Number one, building. Number two, war. Number one, building. Number two, war. The time that you spend to sit down is likened to the sharpening of an axe. So that discussion that you have with people who maybe are your officials is very, very important. And lastly, Mark 4, Mark 4, 26 to 29, the Bible says, and he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seeds on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain, then the ear. But when the grain is ripe at once, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. So that period of the seed being scattered in the field is like the sharpening of an axe by Manikura Tobia Kwa Baya Kwa Ba. Atam Kulima. I think it's the best translation says he even forgets about it, he even forgets what he had done, he had scattered seeds. Because it is the work of the field to produce. I Paul planted Apollo's watered, but God is the one who made it to grow. So here the earth produces by itself. First the blade, then the first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. So these are stages that can be spotted after your conception. So there are signs that come. The lady who has conceived does not know at first. Her journey at the particular people learn. But when they see certain signs following, accompanied with the Marines at one, then they know your father something has happened, then it must come to fusion. It must come to manifestation, it must come into broad daylight. We shall look at the other one later in the next broadcast. So this is the last day of June 2022. God bless, keep you, watch over you, see you in July 2022. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom. Until next time. Bye-bye.